Welcome back, everybody. Parenting is challenging, and sometimes it's just downright hard. That's why ABC4 News of 4 has teamed up with Donna Tatro for Kids Under Construction. It's our conversation each Monday and Friday to navigate this path we call parenthood. She's joining us from LA via Zoom, and today we have a special guest, Georgiana Junko Kelman, a special education attorney. This is a, a category that, unfortunately, I know quite a bit about, so I'm excited to kind of see your perspective here. So what do you see as a special needs attorney and advocate? especially when it comes to special needs kids and their education over the past year and a half as we've been battling this pandemic? Well, the good news is in theory, thank you for having me. In theory, um, there are some incredible laws that protect our children, right? Unfortunately, those laws are not often followed. And so that is why I have a job is that parents have to be ready to go to war. And, and there is no, no um, lesser gentle term to use than that one because oftentimes, unfortunately, children are not offered their proper services, placement, supports. And so parents have to be ready to um, battle for their kids' rights. And, and the good news is that the law is on their side and there's a lot of protection and safeguards to ensure that our kids can access an equal education with the proper supports in place in the least restrictive environment, meaning with their typical peers. But parents have to be ready to make those demands and not take no for an answer, which sadly, it's the reality of, of this um, of this world that we're in. Oftentimes parents get no and they accept no, not knowing that there's a lot more they can actually pursue for their children. Georgiana, you are a fierce advocate. I mean, I have talked to you for many years about this topic and I want to just kind of drill down what are two things parents can do right now to help their kids during this pandemic? Absolutely. The first thing is do not take no for an answer when you know that what you're requesting for your child is correct and that's a battle. But practically speaking, the best thing you can do right now is call an IEP meeting. The first step is to call your meeting, which parents often think that they only have the right to a meeting once per year, right? That's not true. Anytime a parent has an issue with the school where they don't feel that their child is getting the adequate services necessary, you call an IEP meeting, you put it in writing by law they must convene an IEP meeting within 30 days of your request. And so the first step is collaboration. Sit down at that IEP table and express whatever the issue is and have that conversation and get the feedback from teachers and get it on the record, super important. Anytime you have an IEP meeting, record your meeting. Give them notice 24 hours in writing prior to the meeting permits you to record that meeting because you have to go in there arming yourself and knowing that ultimately if you don't get what you want at that meeting, you need to record that evidence so that you can go appeal whatever it is you're pursuing. And so make sure you record your meeting, call your meeting. And at this, I can tell you that right now, um, a lot of children, I don't want to say majority, I don't want to generalize, but so many thousands of children didn't receive what they were supposed to during the pandemic are still not receiving it. And so parents are owed compensatory education for whatever services children were not receiving during that time. And districts are putting the onus on parents to prove that they, their children regressed. Otherwise, they're not going to get their compensatory services. And that's just just absolutely unlawful and not true. And so call your meeting, have the conversation recorded, and at the very least try and collaborate and impart what it is that is missing and how you can work together to supplement and make up whatever it is that your children didn't get and whatever it is they're not getting now. But absolutely call your meeting and at the very least start that conversation. And of course, IEP for people who might not know, that's the individual education plan for these kids who just need a little bit of extra help within their class. Now you talk about parents and teachers working together. Uh, we've talked about some great ideas already to make that happen, but on the day-to-day -day effort with your child, what's the best way for you to team up with your teacher to, to really be in a united front on, on helping this mm -hmm. ch child thrive? You know, what I advise parents um, with kiddos with IEPs is, to always write an accommodation into the IEP that there should be a communication, a systematic communication from home to school. So for example, if uh, the child has certain behaviors or um, you know certain needs that should be documented in order for us to know how to proceed to, to, to help that child, um, some kids have one to one aids. So have a log, right? Because teachers, while I believe parents and teachers need to collaborate and 
be an ongoing conversation and communication. Teachers are important and they're exhausted and they're tired and they've got a ton of kiddos to tend to. So you can't expect that your teacher is going to be able to continually communicate with you. And so because oftentimes that is what a child with special needs requires is that ongoing communication with the school and it can be provided. I always tell parents to make sure the IEP states an accommodation that there is to be an ongoing log of communication where let's say Friday, the teacher sends home the log that says, you know, this is what's happened. If there's something that needs to be reported that um, happened throughout the week, behavior wise, whatever it may be, um, there's a, a log that goes home and it goes to school. Parents can make notes on the logs. So the teacher knows what's going on at home. The teacher at school can make the notes on the logs that go home with the student that tells the parent what is going on. Um, but depending on the needs of the student, I would say at the very least, is what I did with my child who's 19, just graduated. He had an IEP since he was three i would say at the very least attempt to sit down with the teacher at least once per month whether it's before school after school parents of children with ieps cannot afford to be hands off you have to have a continual communication and you have to insist on it because like i said teachers are busy it's difficult for them to have this ongoing reach out to parents and so parents have to have that onus to continually reach out to the teacher and say hey let's have the standing meeting you know I'll accommodate your schedule at least once monthly if not twice monthly depending on the need of the child and sit down with that teacher and make sure you've got your finger on that pulse of what's going on at all times because what often happens happens is you get to the IEP meeting a year from the last one and you are given bombshells of what's going on with your child that you had no clue was happening that should have been addressed prior. Such so that information. communication is key. Such good information. And unfortunately, you two, we are running out of time. Such a big topic, and we just kind of just got on the surface there. So if you want to learn more information about Georgiana and what the services that she provides, we'll, of course, link that online at abc4.com. Donna Tate, what you see there in the middle, happy to have you with us again today. For more information from Donna, we've got it all waiting for you online at abc4.com. Kids Under Construction, the podcast is waiting for you. And as we see every Monday and Friday, Donna not only has so much information herself, but she has this team of help out there that can come answer these specific questions. So we say thank you to, of course, Donna Tetro and Georgiana Junko-Kelman, a special education attorney. Thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate both of you.